Have you ever wondered what it would take to do something really hard for God? Have you ever wondered that when it came down to it, would you have enough faith to do what He asks you to do? In this episode, we're going to look at worship and how worship is the answer to learning how to do hard things for God. Welcome to the Closer to Jesus podcast. My name is Ashley Enos, and I'm convinced that the answer to every problem is a deeper understanding of who Jesus is and how he shares his heart with us. Colossians 2.3 tells us that in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Each episode will be dedicated to strengthening our relationship with Jesus and growing more in love with him every day. Hanging on the promise of James 4.7 that says if we draw closer to God, he will draw closer to us. The first mention of worship comes from the book of Genesis. In chapter 22, God tells Abraham to take Isaac up to Mount Moriah so that he could sacrifice his own son when asked. Genesis 22, 1 through 5, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. In the Hebrew, the word is for worship is shaha, and it means to bow down and fall down in reverence. And it's a very physical act. It's something we do with our bodies. When we worship, we are presenting ourselves before the Lord. And so for Abraham to worship the Lord, um, he had to climb the mountain, build the fire, and do everything that was asked of him. There are also elements of obedience and faith. He had to trust the Lord. Worship took everything that was in Abraham. Um, It wasn't an easy thing. It was something that was asked of him. Um, And so it wasn't symbolic. It was very real and very hard for Abraham to make the decision to worship God. And it was his faith in God that gave him the strength to worship. It was the very God that asked him to worship that gave him what he needed to be able to do it. So Hebrews 11, 17 through 19 in the message tells us, By faith, Abraham, at the time of testing, offered Isaac back to God. Acting in faith, he was as ready to return the promised son, his only son, as he had been to receive him. And this after he had already been told, your descendants shall come from Isaac. Abraham figured that if God wanted to, he could raise the dead. In a sense, that's what happened when he received Isaac back alive from off the altar. So God asked Abraham to worship. The first instance of worship was, Abraham, would you put down your promise? Would you sacrifice your only son who you love, who you waited for, you believed on me for this child, and now I'm asking you to return that child to me? Are you able to do it? And so when God asks us to do something hard, the way he prepares us is through worship. For us to truly worship Jesus, it requires faith, obedience, trust, as well as a physical response. And that's what the Lord wants from us. He wants us to respond to Him. He wants us to draw close to Him. So He will draw close to us. And that is what was asked of Abraham. Abraham, will you do this thing that I'm asking you to do? Will you demonstrate your love for me? Will you give up someone who is precious for somebody who is even more precious? Um, and that's that's what God wants from us, to do hard things so that we can um, walk in that faith and, and be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So the point is, the first instance of worship was Abraham. And Abraham um, was required to do something. And we're going to look at Mary in the gospel who was um, known for her worship. She walked into where Jesus was and she anointed him with her tears, with her alabaster box. She did something for the Lord. And we're going to take and we're going to look and see how Abraham being called to do something, 
is so much a part of worship that we can see that over and over and over again. And so that our worship is not in vain, but it actually does something for the kingdom of God. Luke 7, 36 through 50. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. And tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. And thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, Her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. The lesson we see here in the book of Luke with Mary is that Mary's worship brought others into a deeper understanding of love and the forgiveness of sins. What she did, she anointed Jesus. And by doing that, she demonstrated not just her love for Jesus, but his love for us. Worship is a, a partnership. It's, it's both, both parties coming into agreement that, that there is love to be had there. There is love to express. We worship Jesus and we express our love and we raise our hands and we, we praise Him and, and we speak just how great He is and we sing songs to Him in adoration. And He in turn pours out His love on us and that relationship that we have, the, the willingness to say yes when He does you, the, ask you hard things is strengthened and, and that trust is built and worship, it, it does something through the, the saint, it does something from heaven. Heaven opened up and released down on us in such a beautiful, um, intimate way that, that we draw closer to God and He draws closer to us. Her bold desire to be close to Jesus helped others see with their own eyes what it meant to love Him above anything else. When you worship, you demonstrate God's love. You love Him more than yourself. You love Him more than anyone else in the room. You love Him more than even um, your own selfish desires or what you want. It, it all goes away. And now it's only about Jesus and the fact that He's there and that you're there and there's something to be done. John 12, 1. Um, okay, so then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my bearing has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Mary's worship brought out what was most important. It wasn't planning ahead for the future. It wasn't even the poor who were always there. It wasn't being frugal, and it wasn't thinking about anybody else in the room. Her worship brought out the most important person, the most important um, thought, the most important deed was sitting in front of Jesus and washing His feet. Her worship showed, demonstrated, helped others see 
What was the most important thing? Worship draws you closer to Jesus because it makes Him the focus. It draws all your attention back on His feet, the one who saved us, who cared for us, who died for us, rose again, Jesus. He's the one who deserves it all. And, and when you worship, you're acting on what and who is most important. Worship helps you set priorities. So now I'm going to go to Matthew 26, 6 through 13. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. So Mary worshiped in the face of accusation. She worshiped in front of those who would accuse her. She worshiped in front of doubt. She worshiped in front of fear. She worshiped no matter what else was going on, what people were saying, she had to first walk into that room. Mary, a sinner, a known sinner. Everybody, everybody knew she was a sinner. Everybody thought of her as a sinner. But outside of that room, there was a calling on her life for that very moment. And she had to do what the Lord was asking her to do. She had to walk into that room and break that box of anoint, anointing oil. And she had to pour it over Jesus. And he was the most important person in the room. He was, he was the, 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 the reason everybody was there was Jesus. And she walked in front of all those other people and did the thing that was asked of her to do. And she said yes to God. And she did it through worship. Mary's willingness to worship, no matter the thoughts and words of others, teaches us that the fear of God is preferred to the fear of man. Mary worshiped with purpose. She was preparing Jesus for the greatest work of his life, the greatest work in eternity. And she was able to complete the task in the presence of opposition. Worship teaches us to value the opinion of God over the opinion of man. It helps us to say yes in spite of hard circumstances when the last thing you want to do is stand out. And yet God is asking you to come to the forefront and do something that nobody else would be willing to do. And he's asking for boldness. And worship puts a spirit of boldness in us that draws us forward when we present ourselves to God and say, you know what? Here I am. Use me. I'll do it. I'll be the one. And what does Mary get as a reward? Everywhere the gospel is preached. It's preached about Mary. Everybody knows what she did. Everybody knows she took a stand for Jesus and she did what he asked her to do. And that is um, an anointing that can be passed down onto us. If you will say yes to worship, God will use you. So I married my husband later in life. We were, I was 30 and he was 40. And when I married him, he brought me to a Pentecostal church. And I had never been to a Pentecostal church. And Pentecostal churches do things a little bit differently. They're a little bit more demonstrative and they're a little bit more vocal than what you might get in some other churches. And so when I first went, I could not um, sit and worship the way they worshiped. I couldn't stand, I couldn't run, I couldn't do all those things. And the Lord showed me, He taught me how to do that. And it all began with raising my hands. And it took a long time for me to be able to lift my hands in worship. And I really had to focus on Jesus and the Lord helped me. He showed me how to do it. And he would put that image in my mind over and over of just being free in worship so that I got hungry for it. I wanted that. I wanted that freedom that I saw that he was showing me in my own self what was to come. And I would see it in other people. And I remember looking over at someone dancing in worship. And I thought, how in the world? How do you get so free that you can dance in front of all these people? And I got hungry for it. I wanted it. And what happened is slowly, just little by little, as I would just try 
It took effort on my part. I had to lift my my hands. Nobody did it for me. I had to decide I'm going to raise my hands in worship. And once I got there and I could lift my hands, then the Lord was able to take me into further, further and further, deeper places in worship. But it was that first stage of going, I surrender I submit. If I look stupid, that's okay. If nobody else is doing it, that's okay. If it's if it's just me standing here worshiping God, that's okay. And because the love I had for Jesus was growing every day and it was enough that, that the opinion of man did not matter. Even in a, a friendly environment where worship was okay, it still took everything I had to, to lift my hands in submission. And, and Mary, she walked into a room where nobody was worshiping Jesus. Nobody was anointing his head. Nobody was washing his feet. Nobody was giving him the honor that he deserved. And she walked in that room and she said, if nobody else is doing it, I'm still going to do it. And it strengthened her and it was for a purpose. And I just want to encourage you to, to be the one who will worship because the Lord sees that. He honors that and he will take you further into worship in areas that you could not even imagine. You will have experiences with God, with the maker of the universe that feels so personal that it's like, you know, He showed up just for you, and He did, because you showed up for Him. And so when we show up for the Lord, He will He will honor that, and He will pour out His love, and it will not be in vain. It will be for a reason, and other people are going to see that too. And when you get free in your worship, somebody else can get free in theirs. It's a call. Worship is a call, and it's one that we all have. And so the Lord is good and He has called you and we're going to pray right now that He would just anoint you, that you would walk into a room where nobody else is honoring God and you would be the one. So in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for my friend that's listening. I thank you, God, that they have an anointing on their life, that you have called them for a season, a time such as this, God, that they are worshipers. And Lord, you are seeking people who will worship in total abandonment. You are seeking those who will worship no matter what else is going on in the room, that you would be the sole focus of their attention. And God, as they pour themselves out, Lord, I know that you are so faithful to pour yourself out over them. And Lord, you will even change them. You will change that inner man will be strengthened and um, they will find their joy, their strength in knowing that you showed up for them because they showed up for you. So I thank you, God, for, for that anointing, that boldness that you give us. And I ask that it would just, um, it would manifest, that it would be uh, demonstrated in, in the days to come, God, that even in the next few days, a, a, a supernatural awareness of your presence would just take hold and that they would dance and laugh and sing and shout and praise you for all that you're worth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so how do we take what we've learned and use it to change our lives? How do we take the Word of God and apply it in a way that brings us closer to Jesus? So we know that worship is doing something. It's a demonstration of our love, but it's also saying yes to God. And, and so we're going to take this, this boldness, this act of faith that says, you know what, Lord, I trust you to show up for me. And no matter what you ask me to do, I'm going to do it. And if you will apply that to your worship, not just in a church service, but that that's great. Amen. We want that. We love that. We need that. But also in our own homes, um, no matter where you're at, if you're in a grocery store and the Lord puts a spirit of worship on you and you just need to praise God, will you have the boldness to do it because you don't know how your worship is affecting the atmosphere. You don't know how people are going to be changed by what you've done. Um, Abraham, he was faithful to God and God asked him to do something very hard and he did it and he was rewarded and now we know him as the father of faith. And Mary, she was asked to walk into a room where nobody wanted her there. And no, they certainly didn't want to see her love Jesus, but she did it and it changed, it changed everybody. It changed everything and it prepared Jesus for the biggest task he would ever do, which is our salvation. So I just want to encourage you to do that, to be bold in worship and to present your bodies as a living sacrifice and know that as you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you.
I hope you have enjoyed this week's episode, and I would love to hear what the Lord has put on your heart. I invite you to join me for a live Bible study on Facebook or YouTube every day at 5 a.m. Central. In this study, we are moving faith forward as we connect with Jesus by making Him the first thought on our mind. Visit AshleyEnos.com to find books, Bible studies, and more. And you can always find me on Facebook or YouTube.